Hello, my name is Dennis Alexander, and welcome to this first ever MTNA virtual conference. I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, my home here. Uh, New Mexico is known as the land of enchantment. And I hope today that you might be enchanted by some of these brand new pieces that I'll be showing you today. I would like to remind you to please download that PDF that you have available from my wonderful music publisher, Alfred Music Publishing. And if you want, you can follow along with some of these pieces as I play them. You have just the first two pages of uh, these various examples that I'll be showing during this workshop. I'd like to start today with some very exciting new books that just recently came out. Over the years, I have written many, many toccatas for students at all levels, but I've never done actual collections of toccatas. But now you have available two different collections of toccatas for your students. Book one is all early intermediate through intermediate, and book two is intermediate through late intermediate toccatas. I think students love playing these kinds of pieces. They're so wonderful for building agility and speed, for playing all over the keyboard, and of course, toccatas are, are such exciting pieces for our students to not only practice, but to perform. I can almost bet you that once your students play these toccatas on a program, the audience is going to be tempted to jump out of their seats and say bravo. So here we go. I want to show you a few pieces from book one first. And uh, on your sampler, you'll see on page four some uh, examples from this book. There are six toccatas in book one, and uh, all six of them are, are very uh, different. Uh, they're all quite unique, but they're lots of fun to play, and I know your students will have fun practicing them. I want to also tell you that book one is dedicated to a very dear friend of mine. Her name is Martha Baker Jordan, and she was a professor of piano for many, many years at Cal State Fullerton, and she is now retired and uh, lives there in Placentia, California. Takata Capriccio, and uh, this one is marked Presto Giacoso. Uh, Capriccio means essentially a piece in free form, but I think it also has kind of a double meaning of capricious, humorous, so this little piece is quite playful in nature, and uh, it has lots of uh, triads in root position all the way through, and uh, sometimes those patterns, of those little five-finger patterns that you might have in the right hand are uh, somewhat mimicked in the left hand by a descending broken chord, so you might have... hand. I want to remind you to have your students follow the fingering that I suggested because in the first measure you'll see that we have 5-3-1 here but then on the F sharp major triad we have 4-2-1 just makes it a little easier to get back and forth between those white and black keys. Here is Toccata Capriccio. <laughs>
In the middle sections of all of these staccatas, I have a contrasting pattern or a theme. In this one, you heard that very lyrical uh, theme, which is a nice contrast to the bouncy staccato flavor of the opening. The next staccata I'd like to show you is in your sampler, the bottom of page four, and this one is called Taccata Marcato. A marcato means accented or stressed. This toccata goes very, very quickly. I've marked it vivace spiritoso. And uh, in this one, we want to feel a real strong pulse on beat one and a lighter accent on beat two. So when we have this little pattern in measure three, rather than accent, you get like that. I want to be lighter in the middle of the measure so it gives a sense of forward motion and a little more flow like this. In the, uh, in the opening, we have a chromatic pattern in the left hand, and I have a traditional standard fingering in that chromatic pattern in the left hand, but I want to mention as well that if your students are playing this with one, three, one, three, one, three, two, they could also use this fingering of one, three, one, and cross your fourth finger over on the G sharp and go four, three, two, one. And for some students, that might be easier than uh, the fingering that's marked. But either fingering, of course, is a great fingering for that particular pattern. This piece has lots of triads, but they're not only in root position, but you'll find triads in first inversion and second inversion. So you want to make sure that your students have covered those triads and all those inversions before they attempt to play Takata Marcato. Here it is. is Takata alla breve. And of course, we all know what alla breve means, means cut time. So we're gonna feel this Takata in two. It uh, is marked molto allegro. So I want this one to really um, zip right along at a very, very quick tempo. You'll find this at the bottom of page five of your sampler. Um, this one is interesting because of some real uh, fun rhythmical effects, basically called hemiolus where we have uh, this opening is spelled in two. And then all of a sudden we have what feels like three, or sounds like three. And that little pattern repeats itself a number of times throughout this particular staccato. Um, again, the middle section uh, gives way to a more playful character with lots of um, first inversion triads played staccato and it's very very different from the character of the opening so i hope that you'll enjoy hearing Takata alla breve
particular toccata that I think would make it easier for your students to really play successfully is that you'll notice that all of these little rapid uh, eighth note patterns start on the strong fingers and go up starting with one, two, and three, your three strongest fingers. And when you're playing fast patterns like this, of course, it's much easier for students with small hands or um, not yet really fully developed uh, technique to play those patterns rapidly and successfully. And even in patterns um, like this, I have strong fingers on both of the strong beats. So we have three and one. And again, in this measure. So the, again, the thumb is, is uh, right there on the strongest beats all the way through. In book two, again, book two, oops, it looks like this. And in book two, you're gonna find five toccatas. Now these are certainly more demanding, uh, uh, but they're uh, wonderful pieces to perform and to practice. They lie beautifully in the hand. I worked really, really hard to make sure that all of these pieces fit the hands beautifully, uh, even though they sound like they're you know, quite complex, very often they sound harder than they actually are. This particular volume is dedicated to another very dear friend in California, and her name is Gail Liu. Uh, she teaches up in the Castro Valley area and has been very, very active over the years in NTAC and NTNA. Um, she gives lots of reviews and is a, has a, a wonderful teacher, has lots of very, very fine students. This first piece I want to play for you is found uh, in your sampler book again. And if you uh, look at the title, Blue, Blue Toccata, you might wonder why in the world did I call it Blue, Blue Toccata? Well, that's because it's based on the actual standard blues progression, which if you uh, know that progression, it starts off with four bars of the one chord, followed by two bars of four, two bars of one, and it goes to five, one, uh, five, four, one, one. So it's a 12 bar progression. But since this piece uh, is marked multi presto, it's also in cut time, I've actually just doubled that uh, standard progression. So you really have a 24 bar pattern instead of just a 12 bar pattern. It has a um, very uh, fun pattern in the right hand that has the second finger crossing over the thumb and then right back again like this. Each time the second finger crosses over, it goes to a black key, which makes it you know, more comfortable in the hand than if I were going over from a white to a white note. Even when we go to the four chord, I'm sorry. So we have, then back to one, and when I go to five, even when I go to five, I still go over to a black key. So every single time it's very, very consistent. Um, this has lots of little fun running scales in the left hand in that middle section. Um, even in the middle section, even though it's a very different character, I still maintain that standard uh, blues progression. Here it is, blue, blue, staccato.
I think that's great fun to play. The next one is Takata a la Tarantella. And this one, uh, again, uh, you'll see the first two pages in your sampler. But this is basically just a, a very virtuosic sounding Tarantella. Um, I wanted to do a Takata in, in 6 to 8, and so it seemed kind of natural to think about a Tarantella. But this one adds a lot of um, kind of bang for the buck, so to speak, uh, in uh, the performance. It has a real big opening, starts off fortissimo with that low uh, G octave in the left hand. Um, I've always felt like G minor was a very kind of an intense, dramatic key. Um, think about that wonderful Rachmaninoff prelude in G minor that everyone loves so much. Uh, and that kind of gives you a good idea of, of the drama that I think we'll find in this piece as well. It has lots of uh, very sudden dynamic changes throughout this piece, so when your students perform this one, try and have them emphasize the, uh, the dynamics so that they really get a real wonderful character of this piece along with all of the um, virtuosity. Here's Takata a la Tarantella. You might have their, uh, your students really look carefully at the fingering in certain measures. In uh, measure six, for instance, we have this pattern, which sounds kind of complicated, but in reality, all we have is a G minor chord in, in uh, second inversion in the right hand, outlined like this. In the left hand, we have five and two on the C sharp and F sharp, so they could practice blocking that. together so it fits the hand very very nicely uh, each time they have that particular pattern. I want to um, close my Takata portion here with a wonderful piece called Takata Espanol. Living in New Mexico I felt that I really needed to do a Takata that had a real Spanish flavor and this one certainly does. It's a very different kind of Takata um, it has a lot of rhythmic patterns that go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, like that. But it starts off um, very calmly, actually, um, uh, per Takata style, and uh, it breaks into uh, a full Takata mode uh, at the end of that second page. And from there, it's really, really rapid and very exciting. There's lots of uh, alternating hand uh, patterns all the way through. When we get to this pattern, uh, make sure our wrists are nice and loose so that we really feel uh, comfortable with those repeated uh, alternating chords. And also, if your students will give a nice little accent in the middle of each measure, it'll help to maintain that energy as they play this piece all the way through. But let's listen to Takata 
Das werden wir auch. that you enjoyed listening to those staccatos and realize there are more in each book that you're also going to love. I also want to show you some brand new books that just came out recently that coordinate with our Premier Piano Express series. These are repertoire books and they are available now in four different levels. If you look in your sampler at page two, you'll see uh, pictures of the covers of all four of these books. I only have time to show you just a couple of pieces, but I want to make sure that you're aware of these wonderful new collections. You're going to find uh, many, many different styles in every single book. You're going to find rags, uh, little uh, ballads. You're going to find beautiful romantic pieces, contemporary pieces, and a lot of original classical masterwork pieces as well. I can almost bet you that at some point in time, you're going to find that these repertoire books are going to be a real standard part of your teaching repertoire. They correlate beautifully, of course, with our, um, our Premier Piano Express books, but they also work for any student that you have, no matter what method they might be using. I want to uh, show you a couple from book three. Um, you will see those in your sampler. One of my favorites from book three is called Starry Night. And it goes like this. You'll find a Tarantella Siciliano. Martha Muir and I have written all the original pieces in these collections, and I think you're going to have so much fun teaching uh, all of them. The Tarantella Siciliano goes like this. Piece. Here's a sonatina in G major by Latour. So forth. I know many of you love. 
about teaching Sonatinas, and you're going to find several Sonatinas in both volumes three and four of this series. Another real favorite of mine is the premier Takatina in the back of uh, book three. It goes like this. <laughs> Time is running out on me. Um, there's a wonderful uh, Atwood Sonatina in G, you know, G major, which goes like this. And so forth. You'll find a gorgeous little piece in B flat major called Reverie. So beautiful all the way through. That would be a great little piece for maybe a prelude in church Sunday. Um, I want to end here with Serenade de Seville. Uh, this is a, a wonderful Spanish sounding piece. Your students will love this one. <laughs> portion. Thank you so much for being with us, and I hope that you all stay happy and especially healthy, and I would love to see you all in person one of these days soon. Bye.